Ooh, that's gold, baby. Hello everybody, Silver Picker here and welcome to the Silver Picker Squad. Now today's video is a comprehensive guide to testing gold and silver items at home to see if they are real or fake. And that is going to be critically important to all of you watching because right now gold and silver are skyrocketing. Gold has already surpassed its all time high and silver is creeping up towards it. That is absolutely incredible and that means that there are going to be a lot of people that are selling their precious metals right now which means there's an opportunity for you guys to be buying. And if you can buy at a good enough rate, you can either keep them for your own stack, for your own investment or flip them for a profit. I do a little bit of both and for years I have been making a ton, a ton of money on the side buying and selling gold at garage sales or estate sales, pawn shops, all that kind of stuff and I've been making great money flipping it for a profit. So I'm going to teach you guys in this video how to be just about 100% sure that what you're buying or have already bought is real gold or real silver. So in this video I'm going to teach you the method that pretty much every single professional in the precious metals industry uses to verify whether the gold or silver they're about to buy is real or fake. And it's so, so simple. And all you're going to need are two items, one being a scratch stone and the other being of course the testing acids. You can get both of those for less than 20 bucks in a kit in the links below. If you use my Amazon links, I'll get a little kickback and it won't cost you a dime extra. So I would definitely appreciate if you'd support the channel in that way. Also of course, while you're at it, give the video a like, big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. But in any case, all you're going to need are those two items, less than 20 bucks and the knowledge that I will give you for free in this video. So continue watching and you will become just as good at the pros at determining whether your gold or silver items are real or fake. So enough with the jibber jabber, let's get testing. So here we are, we've got our scratch stone, we've got our testing acids, 10 carat, 14 carat and 18 carat and a bunch of gold and silver items or suspected gold and silver items that we're going to be testing. Now before we actually get started testing anything, what does it really mean to be real gold or real silver, right? This is a gold pendant, this is a gold wire, this is a piece of gold bullion. Are they all real? Are some of them real? Are some more real than others? I mean, what does it actually mean, right? Well, in the most obvious basic sense, real gold or real silver means that the items are composed of the actual elements like on the periodic table of real gold or real silver, right? But it's a little bit more complicated than that and you'll see what I mean, right? This is a piece of gold wire, this is a gold bracelet and this is a gold pendant, right? They're all gold but this gold wire is 14 karat yellow gold, this gold bracelet is 10 karat yellow gold and this pendant is 14 karat white gold. So are one of those items more legit than the other? Are one of those items more gold than the other? What does that actually mean? So the answer is kind of yes and kind of no, right? So Real 24 karat pure gold is both extremely expensive and also extremely soft and not very durable. So jewelers who make jewelry like this bracelet have to mix in other metals that are stronger and less expensive to make the actual final product both more durable and cheaper and also if they mix in certain metals they can change its color like with white gold. This is probably mixed with either manganese or nickel or both. And what about gold purity though, right? The measure that we use for purity are carats and this for instance is 14 carat. But what does that actually mean, right? So 24 carat gold you may know is pure gold. So 100% gold is 24 karat gold. But what does 14 karat gold mean? Well 14 karat is really just a fraction or a percentage of 24 karat. So all you have to do is go back to your sixth grade math class and remember your fractions and that 14 over 24 is actually equal to 58.3. So that's 58.3% gold. Now that might surprise you that 14 karat gold which you always have thought of as gold is actually less than 60% gold and 10 karat gold which is 10 over 24 is 41.67 percent. That's less than half gold. That means there's more not gold than gold in this gold bracelet. So it's really critical that you understand how the percentages work and that will also help you when you're buying your gold and also when you're testing it. Pretty crazy right? You can see the entire conversion chart right over here. 
So when I'm talking about real versus fake gold, I'm talking about items that are at least 10 karat gold or are made of gold that is actually recoverable, meaning you could melt it down and reform it into something, not something that's gold plated, which you'll never be able to recover the gold from or the silver from. So by now, I guess you guys are pretty much experts in understanding the purity of gold, but what about silver? Well, silver is even easier, right? When you have silver, they basically just mark it with the purity itself. You may have seen the word sterling, and sometimes it's accompanied by the number 925. Well, 925 really just means that it's 925 out of 1,000 parts silver, or 92.5% silver. So sterling silver just is a fancy way of saying 92.5% silver. Some other common markings you'll see on silver jewelry are 900, 850, 835, or 800, which of course correspond to their percentages out of 1,000. So 90%, 85%, 83.5%, or 80%. Are you guys still with me? I know that it's a little bit confusing at first, but I promise you the more you practice and the more you work with precious metals, the easier it'll get and it'll become second nature to you. So where do these acids come in, right? Where do these come into play? Well, let's say you've answered an ad on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace and somebody's selling a bunch of old gold jewelry, silver jewelry, and you wanna buy it. So you set up a safe place to meet and you bring your kit along and now it is time to verify. They might tell you that they got this from their grandfather or was passed down from generation to generation or their uncle's a jeweler and it's all real, but until you've proven it yourself with these acids, don't trust anything. It's just a good business practice to assume it's all fake until you've otherwise verified it. Now, I should say that before we start actually using these acids, these are extremely, extremely dangerous. If you're an adult, please make sure you know what you're doing before you use them and use them at your own risk because if you get these in your eyes, mouth, nose, or even on your skin, it can cause serious permanent damage. And if you're a kid watching this, by no means should you even think of touching this stuff without both parental permission and supervision. And it is up to them whether or not to let you use this stuff because it is really dangerous and if you get it in your eyes, there are no second chances. All right, so let's start with gold, right? We're gonna show you how to test for gold and for silver, but let's start with gold. And we'll use this wire as an example. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your scratch stone and you're gonna use an inconspicuous part of the jewelry, right? So if you have a fancy piece of jewelry, you don't wanna ruin it by rubbing it on the front of a ring or something. You wanna find a spot that's not going to show or is not going to really be apparent that you've scratched it. This is just a piece of gold wire, so it doesn't really matter. So what we're gonna do is we're going to scratch a long, nice line on this scratch stone. So you see here, we've got a really nice thick line. And all we're gonna do is we're going to pour some acid on this line and see if the acid eats away at it or not. These acids are specially formulated to eat away at certain types of gold, but not others. So this 18 karat gold acid is specially formulated to eat through anything that's less pure than 18 karat gold. So if you had a 22 karat gold item or an 18 karat gold item, this would not eat away at it. But if you had a 14 karat gold item or a 10 karat gold item or an item that's not gold at all, this would eat right through it. And what I'm gonna do is show you an example of that. So this is 14 karat gold, right? We rub the 14 karat gold wire on here. So with 18 karat solution, it should eat away at the mark we made. So all you do is you drip a little bit on. And let's take a look. So if you look closely, you can see that the acid has totally eaten away at that line of gold. So we know for sure that this gold wire is not 18 karat gold and is either not gold at all or is less pure than 18 karat. So let's give this a wipe and let's use the 14 karat solution on the other half of this line. All right, so now because we think that this is 14 karat gold, Hopefully, this 14 karat gold solution will not eat away at the line and will therefore confirm that it is indeed 14 karat gold. Let's take a look. Now, as you can see, the gold still remains. That scraped up line underneath 
still remains. I'm going to wipe away the acid. You can see that the line, the scratch mark that we put the 14 karat gold on still remains, while the other side that was eaten away by the 18 karat gold solution does not. So that shows that this is indeed real gold. So I've cleaned off the scratch stone using a bit of steel wool and running it under some water, and now the marks are no longer there. So let's try it with the 10 karat gold bracelet. Now again, when you test bracelets or necklaces, you definitely want to test the clasp and the bracelet itself. Now because I actually use this bracelet, I'm just going to test the clasp because that's the most inconspicuous place and it won't ruin the look of it. But when you're actually doing this out in the field, make sure that you test both the clasp and the rest of the bracelet itself. All right, so this bracelet is now on the chopping block to see whether it is real or whether it is fake. So we're gonna use the 10 carat testing solution and see whether or not the line disappears. So let's try it on this side of the gold. As you can see, the gold line does not disappear whatsoever. It doesn't fade away, so we know for sure that this is at least 10 karat gold. But what if we thought that maybe it's 14 karat gold, right? Let's see what happens when we put the 14 karat solution on the 10 karat gold mark. Well, you'll notice right now it's starting to turn a little bit red and it's starting to fade away. Add a little bit more. Speed up the reaction. And you can see, even as we're watching it, it just gets lighter and lighter and lighter. And if we were to put in some of the really strong stuff, the 18 karat solution, it disappears almost immediately. And that's because this solution is formulated for a much, much, much stronger, more pure version of gold than the 10K. And then you just give it a wipe with some paper towel and you're ready to use it again. Now, I've showed you this with 10 karat gold and with 14 karat gold, but what if we use something that's not gold at all? This is a piece of junk. This is fake jewelry, It's whether it's fake gold or fake silver, it ain't either of them. So let's try it. Get a nice robust scratch there. And by the way, as you get used to this and as you get more familiar with this, even as you're scratching it, you're gonna be able to feel what real gold and what real silver feel like. All right, let's test this one out with the 14 karat solution and see what happens. Wow, immediately, immediately disappears. In fact, I don't know if you can pick it up on camera, but it even has turned a little bit green, which implies that there may be some copper in that formula. And there's actually a little bit of vapor coming up. So if you see like what looks like smoke or vapor, that's just the base metals, the non-gold metals just burning up. Look at that. You wipe it away, and there's nothing there. Nothing remains. This was purely fake everything. No gold, no silver. It is just junk. Now, an important thing to note when you're testing gold jewelry and you're testing gold items to see if they're real, sometimes unscrupulous jewelers will mark something higher than it really is. So something might be marked 14 carats, but it'll really be 12 carats or 10 carats. And the way to tell that is if you test something, let's say this item, and you test it and you think it's 14 carat, you put the 14 carat gold solution on it, and it doesn't disappear, it doesn't eat away at it, but it just sort of fades a tiny bit, you can get a pretty good idea that it's actually lower than 14 karat gold. And that's of course for this unscrupulous jeweler to save money and to rip off whoever originally bought that item. So you may want to say to whoever you're buying it from, look, this is what the test is all about and it's actually a lower quality than 14 karat gold, so I can only pay a little bit less. And there's nothing wrong with doing that because when you go to sell it, that's exactly what's gonna happen to you. And by the way, it doesn't usually work the other way around. You're never gonna find a piece of jewelry marked 14 karat, but it's actually 18 karat because no jeweler in their right mind is going to charge you less for significantly more gold. 
So that's really it for gold. It really is that simple. Are you guys shocked at how easy it is to test gold? I mean, all you do is take the gold, rub it on the scratch stone, and drip the acid that you think is of that correct purity. If the line remains, you know that the item is at least as pure as the formula of gold marked on the bottle. So if you test a 14 karat gold item and the 14 karat gold solution does not eat away at it, you know that it's at least 14 karat gold. And if it's of a lower purity, then you try it with a lower purity solution and you eventually pinpoint exactly what the gold is. It's that simple. And guess what? We're gonna do silver now, and silver is even easier. Now with silver, I bet you guys already think you know what to do, right? You take the silver, you rub it on the scratch stone, and then you put silver testing solution on it and see whether it's real or not. Well, you can do that. You can get silver testing solution, you rub it on, and you see, based on the shade of red that the item comes up, whether it is a purer or less pure version of silver. Now, that is not what the pros use. I've never seen a professional in the precious metals industry, and I'm talking, I've spent lots of time on 47th Street in New York's Diamond District, which is none of them use the silver testing solution. What they use is an industry trick, which I'm gonna to reveal to you right now, using 18 karat gold testing solution. That's right, you use 18 karat gold testing solution to see if your silver is real, and I'm gonna show you exactly how that works. So, we're gonna take this silver bracelet, excuse me, this silver necklace, and again, you always wanna test both the, both the clasp and the item itself. So let's test the item itself. We're gonna test this box chain necklace like this. We're gonna sort of just rub the whole thing and see if we can get a nice big bit of silver. Now, of course, on a fancy expensive piece of gold or silver, you don't wanna do that, but this is a broken necklace and it's not really worth repairing because it is silver and that's that. So, what do we do? We're gonna take our 18 karat gold testing solution and we're gonna drip it right on top. You can be pretty liberal with it. Now, what did you just notice happened? What did you guys just notice happened? It was so fast. It didn't disappear. What it did is it changed it to a gorgeous baby blue color. When you test silver, this is exactly what you wanna see. You wanna see this beautiful sky blue color. And you don't want it to be too flaky. You can see if you look close that it's got little flakes in it. If it's too flaky, it probably means that you're testing a silver plated item and you need to file it down a little bit so you can get to the center of the metal. And that's a really important thing. If you think that what you're testing might be plated, you wanna make sure that you're testing somewhere in the center of the piece and not just rubbing the outside off because you can get some false positives that way. But you can see here that this is incontrovertible evidence that this is real silver. And it's a beautiful, beautiful color and that's what I like to see when I test my silver. And to clean it up, you just give it a little wipe with a piece of paper towel, and that's that. And you're ready to test again. So that's about it. It's a lot easier than you thought it would be, right? Essentially, it's just taking a piece of jewelry, scratching it on a stone, putting some acid on, and seeing whether the line remains or disappears. It's really that simple. I do want to warn you guys again that these acids can be very, very dangerous, and there are no second chances if you get it in your eyes. So please, please be careful and use them at your own risk and with real serious discretion. But in order to really get the maximum out of these tools, use the knowledge that you learned in this video and practice, practice, practice. Grab some items around your house and practice with them. Some gold items, some silver items, some things that you know are not gold or silver, and just test them out. And then you will know for when it is time to actually use them, you'll be comfortable with the tools, you'll be comfortable with how to analyze the results and know whether or not you really are buying gold or silver or just some fake junk that you can pass on. So if you learned something from this video, please let me know in the comments below. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Hit the like button on this video, it really helps me out. And of course, please join us in the Silver Picker Squad by hitting that big old red subscribe button. I hope you enjoyed this video. I've got a lot more awesome coin related, precious metal related, and even personal finance related content coming down the pike. So until then, stay tuned.
and Silver Picker out. A huge, huge thank you to all of my wonderful patrons. This week, a special shout out to all of my female patrons. You guys have been so active in the Discord this past week, and it's been great because it is so important to show that coin collecting and precious metal stacking is not just the hobby for old men. It's for men, it's for women, it's for young people, it's for old people, and it's just a blast, and I'm so glad and thankful for all of you. Thank you so much.